Good afternoon. Pleasure to be here. Um, it's a bit of a funky one for me because I'm I'm speaking quite a lot about climate farmers and about regenerative agriculture. And when I went into the call with William to talk about the talk today, that was my assumption. And then we were exchanging our lives and everything. And then I was like, so what would you like to, me to speak about? He's like, talk about your life. Just tell your story. And I think it will fit very well. So here we go. This is a world premiere. I think my least prepared talk. And I'm basically going to tell you the story. Starting um, basically in the countryside, in the middle of nowhere in Germany, in a village with 500 people, um, godmother having a conventional farm. Um, pretty much nothing exciting happening in the first 18 years. Then I did what almost everybody does in the countryside. I moved to the city. So in my case, it was Amsterdam. Uh, found a very nice job there, Fairphone. Settled in, started a nightclub. Had a great time. After three years, uh, gentrification happened and uh, the nightclub had to close. In that time, I already realized that I love the people in the city. I love, especially Amsterdam, I imagine Brussels is the same. Most of the cities, they attract a lot of people with great ideas, with great minds, had a lot of connection, had a lot of friends, and I loved the music, but I didn't like living in a city. I missed nature, especially in the Netherlands, you do that, um, and I missed basically being there, hearing birds, not hearing cars all the time. And so the idea started arising, how can I have both of this? And I started traveling, and I started looking around, and then I found this lovely little country all the way on the west of Europe, which is Portugal. Portugal has the problem that all countries are having of people moving from the countryside to the city in a much more extreme form. It's the most, uh, it's basically the least populated country in Europe, apart from the northern parts of Sweden and Norway, but let's not count that one. And most people are living in Lisbon or in Porto. So on the countryside, there's almost no one. And the Portuguese government was very smart. They realized, hmm, we need to do something against this. So they passed a law that allows you that you can buy houses, you can buy ruins, and you can build them up, and you need no planning permission. No engineer, no architect, no approval. Now, being German, that's crazy. <laughs> like, in Germany, you want to raise your fence by five centimeters. You have to write a few pages, applications, you have to hand it in, and maybe in two years you can start the project. In Portugal, it's like, yeah, you buy the house and that's it. So I was like, okay, interesting. So I started traveling around Portugal, and we through Boom Festival and through another f a lot of coincidences, we stumbled up on an abandoned village. Village sounds crazy now. Uh, it's called a hamnet. In Portugal, they used to have small agricultural settlements in the mountains. They usually focused on having a river, which is what we had, and basically having a nice natural setting, but nothing that we would nowadays plan-wise in terms of city planning. So we were talking about 12 houses with a river going through and a bunch of terraces, and that's about it. Um, the village stood empty for 30 years. Um, we could buy it for 35,000 euros. It was completely broken down, it was completely overgrown, um, and we basically started working on that. And over the course of this, I also stumbled into the field of regenerative agriculture, which is a very, and I think Chuck from uh, Soil Capital was already here and spoke about this, so most of you probably heard about this already. It's crazy. Like, regenerative agriculture is a solution to many of the issues that we're facing, but we're not doing it. So that was, for me, at some point, like, I don't understand how this is the case. There's studies from Wageningen from the 1980s, which already showed that we have a lot of potential for carbon sequestration, building up biodiversity, etc. but we're not doing it. So I decided to go on another journey, and I spent one year visiting all the regenerative farmers that I could find, mostly between Germany and Portugal, basically driving by car, visiting the farmers, talking with them, and trying to understand and to figure out what it is that they need and what they think what is necessary to scale regenerative agriculture. And from that idea, I basically developed my company, Climate Farmers, which I co-founded uh, with a friend of mine since seven, eight years. And with Climate Farmers, we're basically supporting farmers in the transition towards regenerative agriculture. And we're basically having an academy, which is connecting them with each other and with teaching them. And then we're having a for-profit side, which is basically measuring the regeneration that's taking place and enabling them to get paid for it. And that took me away from my village. And that brought me to basically now having an interrail ticket and traveling by train all throughout Europe and visiting farmers and going to events and lobbying for regenerative agriculture. And back in the days, I'm still thinking of doing this now for a few years, hopefully making regenerative agriculture mainstream and then going back to the village and then bringing culture to the village and hopefully convincing more and more young people that we can actually also do what we want to do in the city 
in the countryside. And that's, I guess, my idea.